Hello everyone, I am Bradley Sword, Associate Professor of Computer Information Systems at the College of DuPage in Glen Ellen, Illinois. In this video I'm very excited about, we finally get to do some fun work, part 16 of our continuing series in making the game Voxel slash Sokoban, and uh, part 3 or 4 is when we finished Game Maker's Studio version, and we've been going ever since porting this thing over and making a game engine and putting this game on top of it. Why am I so excited today? First off, I got a little bit of sleep, and second off, uh, here we go. What are we trying to do? We're trying to make this game 720p resolution. 60 by 60 are all of the tiles that we've been using, all the graphics that we've pulled in. And we're going to move the guy around, push some blocks around, and we're going to find some goals. And again, why am I so excited? Because we are finally, I am finally going to stop talking about it every single time the video starts up. And we're actually going to do the gameplay. We're actually going to figure out how to move this character around. We're going to see what we need to add to everything because we're, we're going to need some add some functionality to find objects in our scene at given points because we need to know if we're touching a box or if we can move forward if we just walk or push a box or if there's a wall in the way or things like that. And then eventually we're going to also have to determine if goals are touching boxes as well. So we're going to need to develop some functionality to get a hold of this. So the only thing I've done in Game Maker so far, I went back to my original work and I pulled down, I, I took all my graphics because uh, right, you know, when we first started, we only had one solid image, you know, one static image for our character, but this character can animate and this character can walk around and push blocks. So I went ahead in here and what you do is you go into a sprite, any of the four, you go ahead and you edit it you go to image and you go to export to PNG, put it inside your project in the same folder where all your the graphics are, and that will set up a, a slide or whatever, a, a, whatever they call it, strip image. And there'll be four images because each of these characters have four sub sprites. And so it'll set everything up for us so we can use that to go ahead. And so I just did this for all four and just put them in. And then I went into the uh, game initialization room and I added those four textures and I put them in here, up here in my resource files. Here they are, hero, 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 hero. And you can see that, there, there that is. And it's all clear, you know, all, all see-through and all that like we have discussing before. And so there are my four sprites. And because I'm gonna be using those, I'm gonna get rid of the, the old hero sprite because this is all we're gonna need. And if I run this now, it should crash when I get to the game part because there is no sprite. And there is an amp, so that's that's what happens there. No sprite, I get a crash, but that was expected. I just told you I was expecting to see that. So all I need to do right now to get started, and then I can move on to bigger and better things, go into my hero.cpp and say, I want to start in the hero down state. Level one. <laughs> And there you go. Nothing. <laughs> What's so funny about that, right? I didn't tell Game Maker that I need to set this thing up so that there's four frames horizontally and one frame vertically. And so now if I run this one more time, let's see what happens level one. There's my guy right back to normal and everybody's happy. And remember the bounding box works perfectly because we, we tried this out already with the button class and everything. So we're good there. And if I, oh, it doesn't move at the speed of one. Hmm. Or is he walking and I'm not noticing it? No, I'm not noticing. It's not doing anything just yet. Let's see. What is going on in the step event here? Step event. Oh, set speed. Nope. Set speed to zero. Set alarm. Set direction. Set direction. So I'm kind of a little worried here that the character is not animating. Oh, set speed. Duh. What if I do set image speed? 1.0 point, point. I think we're using 0 0.175 if I remember way back when. There he goes. And now he looks like he's walking. Look at that. He's so cute. Okay, so now we're kind of ready. And so we're ready to use this thing. We're ready to move on. So let's see. I don't want him to walk when we start. I don't want him to animate. I don't want him to do anything. I want to. I need to call this step event, but everything else, we're going to need this alarm eventually. But everything else can go. So we have a fresh slate to start from. And just one more time. Nothing doing. No buttons. Oh, I could probably use that escape Let's bring this, oops, oh boy, uh, control Y, or there's my escape. So at least that, at least for the moment, we will add a button eventually too to this so that you can go in here and click down here just like we did in our old game because our, our main goal is to basically port exactly what we did in Game Maker 
over to here. So I can't do anything, but I can hit escape to return back to the main menu. And this takes me to every level. This quits my game. So I'm ready to go on. I'm, I'm, ex I'm, I'm excited about this because I'm seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. We're just a couple short videos away from being done. Maybe three, maybe three more parts, two or three more parts after this. Okay, so I'm looking at Game Maker, I'm looking at all my old code, and what did I do? I made our character move at a speed of 6, 10 game frames when they tried to move around the screen. So before we worry about collision events with anything, let's let's just check, let's just test our engine out and see if we can make something like this work. So I'm going to try in the right direction. So I already have the escape key going on here. But I'm going to say here, if key down, or I'm going to say key pressed actually here, if key pressed, right arrow key, or if you want to use the D key or whatever, whatever I'm just going to use right arrow key and I'm going to forget and try to use D, but that's okay. Uh, what I want to do here is I want to set, okay, set alarm, like we were saying, let's set alarm 0 to 10, uh, set uh, speed, I'll set, to, no, set speed to 6, and just for the set direction, I'm trying to go right just to 0, just to be safe. Set speed, set direction, set alarm, and then on alarm, I want to set the speed to zero. And let's see what that does every time I press right. So if I did this right, every time I press right, I'm just going to hit it one time, and he'll go one square over. Okay, so here's my game room, and oh gosh, here we go. All right, look at that. Oh, that's fast, huh? Well, that's not too bad. I don't know why the first one felt faster than it really was. But there we go. Every time I press right, he goes one frame to the right, and everything and looks like everything's locked on. I think so, right? Let's try this one more time. It's kind of hard to tell. Like with that, is that locked on? Like we'll, we'll be able to tell later. I'm pretty confident that that is the locked on sprite. Or let's see, we can look down. Because there is a lot of white space between everything. So, and I never went in, uh, and fixed up the sprite to condense it down anymore or spread them out or do anything because I'm not an artist, so I didn't worry about that. But we can see that that's working for us. And so one last thing I want to figure out is how can I change the animation? And so let's see, get, if I get the sprite... And then I can say, how about I set, oh, I can set the actual texture. And so I can do that as long as I get a texture. And to do this, I we haven't done this in a long time, I need to, to pull the texture manager. And so what I can do here is I need to get SFML texture manager after all this. It's been a while. Our good old friend doing all that hard work for us, texture manager. And I can say, hey, texture manager get instance and can you find me or get it I get get texture can you get me I called it hero right and if I can put some quotes there let's see are you not happy why are you not happy no suitable container oh and that's because I need to set the texture I need to take this whole thing and dereference it and turn it into a reference rather than a pointer. So let's try it out. Hey, look at that. Okay. Hmm, the interesting thing is that the animation doesn't go when I do this. And so that's because the image speed is always zero in this case. And so when I do get a chance to walk, I should be able to set the image speed. 0 0.175 float and when I come out uh, when I hit that alarm I should stop my steps right hey, look at that. oh he's walking he's walking he's walking and he looks like he's actually doing his job so th this is not the time to go ahead and fix up everything for all four directions this is not that time and that the only reason being Let's just get it working for one direction and then we can fix it up and make it and the, do the tediousness because this step event's going to be huge. We can break it up into subparts and do all sorts of stuff. But let's just get it working next because now we're going to have to figure out if I can walk into that space because right now there's nothing stopping my progress. Okay, so I'm going to need a basically a second, second if check here just to be able to move around freely. We're not going to worry about pushing the block around, pushing the boxes around just yet. We're just going to see, can I walk around so that I do not 
push against a wall or walk into a wall or walk into a box at the current moment in time. So I would like to do some kind of statement here if there is no solid object to my right, right? Something like that. And so one thing we never did when we set everything up here, we set all our objects up. We set our hero, not our hero, we set our uh, box. And we, oh, let me find the dot H's, sorry. We, let's see, uh, our box dot H and our wall dot H. And they both parent to SFML object. But what we did in the Game Maker game was we base, we base classed both of them to this thing called solid base class. And there was, it's basically just holding this as children. And that was just so I could use the inheritance and polymorphism. So I could basically try a dynamic cast. So I don't have to do all sorts of complicated work to say, if I'm not touching a goal and I'm not touching a box and I'm not touching this and not touching that, all I have to say is if I've done my hierarchy correctly, all I have to worry about is uh, going ahead and checking for that one type, the solid base class. So I'm going to go ahead and create that solid base class right now. .h file. And so I can steal, I can borrow, I can steal and borrow. Oh, I called it header.h again. I just want this to be called solid. I'm just going to call it solid object. And so it's going to take in and this is just a placeholder for everything that needs to get passed up into, because it doesn't it doesn't need a step event, it doesn't need an alarm, it just needs to be parented. So coming back here, so my header, let me rename that header because that's a horrible name. This is going to be solid object dot h, and so solid object dot h, and now I just have to look at what does game object dot sfml game object take. It takes in all these parameters, right? So we just need to pass those up because this this is just we're just kind of delegating through. This thing is just a placeholder, so I can use the polymorphism. So I can just go ahead. Oops, I have this twice. So I say, okay, solid object. Pass in my x. Pass in my y. This, that, whatever. Just use my constructor. Put it into solid object that cpp. And all I'm doing, all I should be doing here, is just passing all of this up to the SFML object and just say pass my X, pass my Y, pass my resource, horizontal frames, vertical frames, and leave everything else alone. And oops, oh, I hate when that happens. Where's my solid object.cpp now? Oh, I have it. No, that's solid object. SFML or uh, solid object.cpp, where are you? So just all this, just to put the nothing here. Okay, so that sets up the solid object type, and so now I, that should do it as long as I save that as I go, save that as I go. And so now my wall, instead of parenting to SFML object, should parent to this new solid object. Make sure everything's happy, and then I can do the same for box.h. Nope, oh, I don't need this graphics anymore. Oops. Solid object, solid object, and then what do I need to, yeah, this doesn't change because everything else gets moved up accordingly. So let's, because the box constructor itself, if you remember right here, the it passes along the three parameters. Oh, it's not happy anymore. Indirect non-virtual base class is not allowed. Whoa, what does that mean? Let me check that out and I'll get back to you. So for reals, you know, real per the, when you're out there in the field, you're not always talking while you're developing, right? Trying to think and do all this. So all I did was for box.cpp and wall.cpp, I just, because I changed the, the way I derive things, I just have to call the correct parent. So I have to call my direct parents constructor from the wall, which is the solid object. The solid object calls the F SFML object. So now we have a three-layer hierarchy going between everything. So wall gets the solid object. Box gets the solid object, and now this, oops, I didn't mean to clean, so this should now, there's still warnings all over the place that we'll fix up in a little bit, but everything should compile now, and everything should go, and it does, I have a success, and so now I have this the idea of a solid base class, just like I have in GameMaker, 
between all of this stuff. So now it should be a little easier once we derive and create this function to determine what objects are a specific place in time. That's what we're going to do right now. So to do this, we need to go into and tinker with the room. We haven't touched the room in quite a long time now. And that's because we're going to start in the room and then work our way down to object. And so then, the, then every object that derives from it can call this function. And so here we go, because we need to put this in the room because the room knows about all the objects in the scene. So we would need some kind of function. Let's see, I'm going to, yeah, we already have vector included here. I am going to return a vector of SFMO object pointers. And my function is going to be called something like get all game objects at position. And so, like, if you want to think of this as game maker, maybe I'll call it this. I'll call it instance, instance, uh, uh, instance place. No, I like my other function better. It's more wordy, it's more Java-like. Get all game objects at position, and then I would say, give me my, give me a position, give me a float for the x position, give me a float for the y position, and now the only thing is like, it's just a vector of SFML objects, but that's great and all, but when I get them all back, they're all just general types. I don't know what each of them are. And so this doesn't really help me. I, I would like to create a function that would say, how about get all game objects of a specific type at a specific position? And you're like, how the heck would I do something like that? And so, and so what I would love to have is to return a vector of P types. Because I could tell you, oh, I want just the walls, or I just want the heroes, or I just want the goals, or I just want, of, of all the things at this position in space, I just want these types of objects. And if I want all of them, I could just, in the angle brackets, you know where I'm going with this templating, that I could just pass game object in, and I'll get all game objects. But this allows me to, the granularity to go down and pick the types that I want. So this is a, a function, type name, uh, Type name class or type diff or, yeah, 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 yeah. template type name t function something like this. Let's see, does that work? Yep, so far so good. So it's a templated function. You tell me the t type that comes in, and I'll I'm, and this function will do a search, go through every object in the scene to see if they match, and then they'll return back to me. And then that's pretty cool, right? So at that position in space. So I can go ahead and, oh my, what the heck, wait, to create definition, oh, uh, this is a fun one. If we've never, we've probably seen this before, maybe we haven't, maybe we've you know, discussed this. Templated functions, you're like, why does this say in the .h file? Because there was a conflict a while back. There were these, they were trying to add keywords so that you could actually put templated functions in the CPP, because you're always supposed to kind of separate the header from the implementation. But that's not easy at all when it comes to the way compilers work if I'm using templating. And so I can, I have to put a templated function. I don't know, why does it bring it up when it's just down below? I have to put a templated function down below here inside of the .h file. It's, there's just no way around it. Okay, so up oh, and it, oh, and they inlined it too. I don't I don't think that's going to fly after they figure out how much work we're going to put into this. So what I need to do here is what's cool is we've already wrote the function inside object.h called down here is point within sprite bounds. So we already have all the hard work done when it comes to figuring out if a point is within that boundary and we have a point and we have a sprite but we just have to test every single sprite and in a real world environment, we would create a data structure called a quad tree, and we would basically set up this spatial structure so that, and put objects inside of this thing so that I can, when I look for a position in space, I'm searching the least amount of objects possible. And so you could look up quad tree, you could look up oct tree when it comes to three dimensional space. We're not gonna cover that, that's way too complicated for just a simple game. So we're just going to be just doing a linear thing here. We're just going to go through object for object. And since it's a simple, you know, a simple game with 100 objects, and most of them are just going to be wall objects, we don't have to worry about a slowdown. We really don't. The game, we will not notice it like we would if we were doing this with thousands of objects and trying this over and over and over again. Okay, so I've got my function here. So I'm going to need a vector of t-pointers. So I'm going to call it, I'm just going to say objects, 
set started out empty. I'm going to return objects when I get through everything. And as you kind of might, might imagine here, it's not so bad now. For every uh, T, oh, for every SFML game pointer, I'm sorry, game pointer, uh, object, SFML object pointer O that is a part of objects capital. I'm sorry for the confusion here. Capital O is the member ve vector. Lowercase O is the thing that I'm going to return back for everything in the scene if. And so here we go. So I can say if O arrow. Oops, I <laughs> O arrow. Uh, let's find that function. Is point within sprite bounds. X comma Y comes back true. I am going to do objects dot pushback. Uh, oh, but now this just you know this is just general here, right? Does this actually compile? I'm curious. Oh, it never. Oh shoot, that's the fun of templating. Also, is it never com You don't actually compile it because it's a template. You never actually compile it till you try to use it somewhere else. And so it says it succeeded, but I'm not a hundred percent sure. But what I do know is. This isn't testing the T type. This is just testing every object in my scene. So, what is easier to do, a dynamic cast or to do this? I need a third check here. I'll just do, I'll put the dynamic cast last because I know that's the probably the most dirtiest of all of them. And what I can say here if, is if, then I might have to come back to this if I get a compiler error later. And I say if dynamic cast, and I try to convert this into a T type. Whatever O is, I try to convert it. And if, but if it comes back as not null pointer, then I know it is the t-type. And then I can pop it into my vector and return it. So it's it's three, for every object, is the point that I care about inside of the bounds of the sprite? And then on top of it, is it the specific type? And so I think I think the dynamic cast takes the more the most processing. Maybe, maybe not. And so if and if you did some research and found out it was the other way around, well flip the if statement. But if it is the type and the sprite is with or the value, the, the position is within the bounds of the sprite, put it on the list, put it in the vector, return it back. And so this might just work for this kind of thing. So let's go back to hero now and see if we can tie this in and see if we can actually get it working. So here is the hero class again, and now this was our wish list a little while ago, and if I did, if I played my cards right here, this is going to work out just perfectly. So I'm going to say, if there's no solid object to my right, so what I can do here is I can set up, do, do I have vector? Do I have access to vector? Yes, apparently. And I'm going to say a vector of solid, uh, what was it called? Solid, what did I call it? I think solid object pointers solids, I'll call it solids, equals, and now, oh shoot, but this was a room function, and I was discussing, we need to bring this back a step here. Let me include solid object just for the time being. And so what we need here is a function, because otherwise I'd have to, in, from here, I'd have to call the game, and the game would have to get the current room in order to call the function to get, you know, inside of here, right? The room would have to, have to get the room to or get the game to get the room to call this function. And so what I can do here is just, instead of making the work be done all here, I can put that into the game object engine code so that it gets done automatically. So basically I'm just I'm just duplicating this here, putting this into the object.h, implementing it here in the .h file down below. And so now all I'm going to return is, and this is where I'm going to put the work of getting the game and doing all, you know, let, me, let me make this a little bigger, of getting the game so that I can get the room, so I don't have to do it every single time. Rem uh, so SFML, let's see, do I have access to game? Okay, I do, apparently. Get instance, get current room, and then I can call this function passing along x, y. So... So when the object calls for it over here, it'll call the room, it'll call the object code here, which will call the room code, which does all the work and returns back the vector of T pointers. And so all that delegation and all of this, so I can go, what, what was I saying here? 
this if the solid objects is equal to, and now I have access to this function, get all game objects at position, and now I have, oh shoot, now I have to get the position of my object. So, oh, so that's it. One more step here is I can just say x comma y. But now I want to test to my right, so I want to go uh, sprite width over. One sprite width over. Is this not happy with me? And so, yes, because it doesn't know the vector. It doesn't know, you know, I know the x, I know the y, but I do not know the t type. So I have to say solid object. And let's see, do I have to put the pointer? Let's see if I, let's try it out with the syntax. Solid object, type, the type t returns a vector of t pointers. And I don't know. Let's just try it. This is part of the fun of programming. Is I'm not 100% sure this is going to work. But if I but if I do know that the solid's size, or if if it's empty, if this thing comes back empty, then I know there's the theoretically here. If I did it right, there's no solid object in my path, and I can go ahead and do this. Cross fingers. Let's see what happens. First off, does it compile? Nope. Okay, so what have we got? This thing. Let's see. Could not deduce template argument t. That's the fun of this. Let's see. T. T pointer. So let's see. Solid object. T pointer. T pointer. Nope, that doesn't work. Let me try this out. Templating is fun like this sometimes. Everything seems to be okay, but nobody's really happy. I just have to figure out what's going on, and then I will get back to you here in one second. Okay, so I took a little work here, but I do have it now. Template hell is fun sometimes, just trying to figure out. You know what you're trying to do. You're just trying to get the syntax, you're kind of the compiler to agree to everything you're trying to do. So let's, let me start from the room and work my way backwards again. So now, just to say, this is template type name T. There's no pointer involved with this anymore. So template type name t, standard vector t, game objects at x, y position. And so the implementation of this function now is uh, set up a vector of t, because and we're going to pass a pointer in, so t is the pointer. And so for every object in objects, go ahead and try to cast it into this t type. And so, you know, we're, we were doing that anyway, but now we're, di we're doing it because we would theoretically have to do it twice if we we're going to check this later on. So we might as well just do the work and cast it up front. And now I would say if we're going to do the cast, we might as well just do the check up front so I don't have to do any more work. So I end up do, I do end up flipping this thing around and saying, okay, try to cast, and if the cast is not null pointer, that means I was able to cast it into the t-type. That means I was able to take the, the pointer that was just this t-type, which is a game object, solid object, and I was able to actually turn it and say, this is an actual solid object. And so that's very, very good here. And so that means that I found thing, and then I'm going to throw it on the list. But if it's any other type, I couldn't dynamic cast to it. It returns a null pointer and so it's going to fall through that if statement and come around and go to the next object because it's not the type that we were expecting. And so we just do this over and over and over again. Then when we get done, we return the, the vector of objects that we've accumulated when we progressed through the entire vector. And so that's the hard part of all of this. The object class is type name t, vector t. So I, again, I removed the pointers from this. But now here's the fun part here is in this function here, I also forgot you have to template this part too. So when I do this t-type, t-type, get, get objects at x, y, I have to get the game, get the instance, get the room, call the function on the room, apply the t-type, and then the x and the y. That is really fun and complicated stuff. And so now with these two things in place, now I don't have to touch the hero.h, of course, but over here in hero.cpp, this is now how I use this function. I say, okay, I'm going to create a, a my t-type, in this case, is the solid object pointer type, and so I'm going to pass that along as my t-type, but I'm going to try to say, okay, get all the objects that are one tile to my right. So x plus one sprite width is how far I want to go to my right, and, and y is my y value. And then if it's empty, that means there's nothing, there's no solid object. In this case, there's no wall, and there's no, uh, there's no uh, box in my way to my right. And so I can do what we've done before and just move the entire square. 
and I'm a lot more confident because I've seen this work already because I was just testing it before I made sure I showed you guys what was happening. And so here I can press right, I can press right, and he doesn't walk anymore because he's done his job and he's hitting a solid object. And you're like, well, what about the walls? I can show you that too because I got level two going on here and he can go right. Now he can't go right anymore because there's either a box or a wall in his path. So it's pretty cool. We did the, we've done the hard work now. And so now, now let's try out like we did with Game Maker. That tests out walking. And it's cool, right? Because he does animate while he does this. <laughs> it's amazing how you can watch yourself play these games all day. He animates. It's really cool. And so now that's the walking part of this. And now I want to say, well, okay, if there's, if there is, you know, so what happens here? There was a solid object in my path if I hit an else here, right? And so what I can do here is I can say, I can, I can you know, make it easy on myself and call this, and create a secondary one here. And I can say, I can make this, I have to go inside of here. And I'm going to set up this time a vector of boxes. Because I want to see if there's a box in my way, because then I'm able to, then I should be able to move it, right? Box.h, okay, so I want a box, I want a box pointer, box pointer, and the, and the same thing goes. And if, and say, and if I wasn't talking and thinking and making mistakes as I'm doing this, I would just go, I would just progress through this vector, but I'm not going to worry about it because let the two passes through isn't going to kill anybody, at least on a first draft. I would put it to do here and say, fix this up. You know, this is slow. And so now if and theoretically, every object in my scene should only be in one place. There should never be two objects in the same position at the same time. So if, just to make sure, if, oh, I don't need to call it solids anymore. I'll call it boxes. And so I should have exactly one box. And just to test it out, I'll say, um, I'll just put a, I'll put a breakpoint in here. If the size of the number of boxes is one, do your little happy dance and pause my program. So let's see, I go, I go right, I go right, I hit that because there is a box to my right. Isn't that pretty cool? I think that's really cool. So then, and then coming back and running this one more time with level two, you can see that it doesn't apply going to the right when there's a wall because the dynamic cast did not apply in that case. And so this does tell me there's a box, one sprite to my right. And now, what if I now do a th another check? There's a box, okay, keep that box. Okay, if there's one box, and now I can say, well, how about coming back to solid object again? And I'll call it, I can call this solids again here, and say, okay, do this, get me all solids, but this time around, just like we did earlier, let's, nope, solid objects, not solids, solid objects, two times sprite width, or sprite width multiplied by two. Oh, I can't spell again. Okay, so is it just solid object talking and thinking and doing? Okay, here we go. So then I get my solids, and now the final thing here, now if, and now here's the big one here, if the solids.size is equal to zero, now, whew, all this hard work, now this is where I want to put this, I want to be able to walk. I'm going to slow it down, right? because he's gonna, the same image speed, but he's pushing hard, but his speed is cutting one third, if I remember right, and the alarm is set to 30. 30 times two still gets me 60 pixels. And so, at least in this case, he should be able to walk through a single box. Oh, look at that, and he slowed down while he did it, right? Okay, so then the only thing left to do is to set up the box to do the exact same thing. All of this stuff, not the set sprite, but all of these things here need to be duplicated for the box. And I can just do this by saying box is at zero because I know it's one sized. Wait, it's not happy about that though? Is it an arrow? Oh, it's a pointer, so it's an arrow, sorry. So I can say get me the first box, which is the only box in my in that vector. And we know it is in there. It's guaranteed to be in there because the size of it is one. And I can say, okay, move everything at the same speed. And now the only thing you'll see here is there's no alarm in the box. 
we never, you know, the box is an empty class right now. So I go, I push the box, and it just keeps on going. It's on the frictionless plane going off to infinity. And so all I need to do to finish the deal here, go back into my box.x or cpp my box.h, set up a virtual on alarm function and int alarm. Which alarm is it? There's only one alarm. I think that's it. Virtual oh, virtual void on alarm. Let's see, does it turn green? Okay. Quick actions define over here. And this is just where I can say set speed equal to zero. And let's try it out. So I go, I push, there it goes, 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 and I can't go anymore because there is a box to my right, but there's a wall, there's anything solid two to my right. And so I'm pretty happy with this, and there's one last thing here. If I jam on this twice fast, or I hit this once and I hit this twice, now you can see I'm halfway in between all of this. And it just comes down to there's no checking while I'm pushing the block. If I hit that key a second time real fast, it just resets the whole alarm timer. So there's no check here to see, like maybe if I'm still moving, don't allow any of this movement to occur. And so that's like the final check before we can go ahead and fix up everything for all four directions because it's just taking this code. Oh my goodness, that's a lot of code, right? And just and just taking this code and making it work for left, right, up, and down, all four directions. And so the last thing I need to do here is if I move, if I move, if the keyboard is going to the right and I can get my alarm value, right? Or get, say it's get alarm, right? Or just alarm. Alarm. Yep, I can tell. I can tell you what alarm do I want, it'll tell me the value. So I say I want alarm zero, alarm zero. Tell me if alarm zero is less than zero. Do. And so remember, negative zero is when the thing triggers, and negative one is what the value sits at while it's just sitting there untriggered. So if it's less than zero, I'm able to do this. And so now hopefully this works out for us. And that's at the first check of everything. If the, if, the, if the alarm doesn't allow it, there's no reason to do all this hard work, right? You're trying the easiest way out. So level one, come in there. Okay, you can see, go right, 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 right. And now I'm locked in. No matter how many times I hit that button, as long as that alarm is still being counted down, I can't do anything about ending up not locked into a tile once I finally finish my push into the next block. There we go. I think this is really cool. We're almost done with movement. I'm going to take a quick little break here now, and then we'll fix up the four directions. And then if this is working, we have the bush, the block pushing all done, and we're ready to move on to figuring out how to have, if we have a winning condition. All right, let's test to the left then. I've copied this. I'm just going to copy paste this and just change what's necessary here. So if the, now we're going to test the left arrow key. The alarm is the same. The alarm applies to anything. Now this is going to be a minus sprite width instead of a plus because now I'm testing to my left. And if that's the case, set the image speed, set the speed. Speed is just a magnitude. It's not a direction. Direction is 180. And I'm setting the alarm to 10 like I did before. And now I'm going to change the sprite to hero left. Otherwise, let's figure out here. So again, this is minus sprite width again. So I'm going to test to see if there's a box. If there is a box, this time around, I'm going to go 2 to my left. And that's what this does. Multiply x minus 2 times sprite width. And then if this is the case, set the speed to 2. Set the direction to 180. Set the alarm to 30. Set the text or set the graphic to left. Set the image speed for the box, set the image speed, speed itself, this, that. I don't think I have to touch the box. It's just the player that is being modified. Oh, I do have to set the direction, obviously. Though. And then that way, there we go. And so we can't really test out, can't test out pushing the block left just yet, I don't think. But I can definitely test walking left and right. So far, so good. And so is there another level that I can tinker with? There we go. We can try it out here. Good. Left, left left. I can't go any further, but I can go right. 
Yay, this is amazing. And at this point, I believe I can, just before I move on here, I believe I can change now that I've done this, I, now that I've set up the alarm timer, I can say down instead of pressed, so you don't have to click, click, click every time you want to walk and every time you want to push something. You can just go ahead and hold the key down and the alarm timer will, when the alarm timer goes off, then it'll know to hold, I can keep on going. So like this, I can hold down, hold down, hold down, hold down, hold down. See, I, I'm only touching it one time and I let go. I think that's pretty cool. And so I can test that out and I can test this out here. Oh, <laughs> sorry, I don't have this going on here. So there's my, I can just hold down the button. I don't have to keep going bam, bam, bam every time I want to move. And I think that's pretty slick. Okay, so that handles left. So let's handle up and down. Now, uh, up and up is the same as left. It's just negative in the y direction instead of negative in the x direction. And I don't have to worry about else ifs because the alarm is going to take care of that. There's, you know, if if by some chance you hit both keys at the exact same game frame, well, well. <laughs> but generally speaking, that's not going to happen, right? So. Or, well, you know, whatever, that's up on you. So let's see, I'm going to try to go up this time, since that's the equivalent to the left. And so this time around, I'm going to say, okay, this is, instead of sprite width, this is going to be sprite height. Whoops. Y minus sprite height. So then if, if this thing is empty, the speed is the same, the image speed is the same, the direction is up, which should be 90 degrees. And this will be hero up, because I'm going up. Is key, and this is where things get weird. Is key down up, you know, that kind of thing. But anyway, coming back again. So let's see, steal this guy. Minus sprite height again. If boxes is one, try to go over to my y direction twice my height. And if so, set the image speed, set the speed, the direction, 90, set the alarm, change this to up, and then for the box, set its direction to 90 as well. So let's see if that, at least if I can go up here in this case, up, up, okay. Do I have any other levels, oops, do I have any other levels that I can try out up and at this moment? Yep, a little bit, but not really. Anyway, okay, so up is working as far as I know for the moment, and then we can change this for down, and then it should and then it should be pretty easy to figure out where we screwed up. Because everything it theoretically should be working for pushing blocks around at this point. So is key down uh, solids, and now this is just this is just reversing the minuses to pluses and turning the 90s into 270s if we did this, and turning the ups into down. So plus sprite height, plus two times sprite height, change the direction to 270, change the sprite to down, set image speed to that, set the speed, set the direction to 270, and set the alarm. And let's see if I got all four directions going now. So let's see, okay, I can push to the right, I can, whoops, push to the left, I can, I can push down, I can push up, I can't push up when there's two blocks in the way, I can't push when it's two blocks in the way that way, I can't push when it's two to the down, and I should not be able to, did I test both here, that, oops, oh no, and that, I can't win the game now, and so it looks like it's working, let's see, let's test this out here in the corners, I go, okay, I can't go up, and I can't go left just by pushing. And now I need to test right and I guess right and down. So let's say I'm going down, going down, can't go down, can't go right. So I'm looking, I'm feeling like I'm looking pretty good here. I'm pretty happy. And let's see, this goes over. Oh, let me try this. Oh, I'm not hitting escape. Whatever the heck was I hitting? And let's see what this looks like. Okay, we'll have to play with depth settings. That's no big deal. We already did that a long time ago. The player already goes over the bot over this, but we want to make sure what were the what were the depth settings for our objects. Let me fly back to Game Maker real fast here. The hero was set at a minus three, so we'll use a three for the hero. We'll use a one for the box and a two for the goal. 
So hero gold box in that order. And so inside the hero.cpp, I can say I want to draw the hero on top of everything else, set depth to three, and I can borrow this. And what did I say here? The goal was the two. I hope I said the goal was the two. Let me try it. The goal was the two. So I can go, oh, I'm still running, that's why I can't see everything. I can go into goal.cpp and fix up the depth to two. And then fix up the depth for the box to one. And now everything should work out since we did all that hard work earlier. That's what our engine is there for. So there now, just to say my person still draws over, and now the box should draw over the, that as well. And it does. And so now I can see the box and I can see the goal both at the same time. And there we go. So it's a little, maybe it feels a little weird, but again, it's, if I would rather be able to see the goal then, then put the box over and go, where's the goal again? I don't remember. So, cool. So we have we have a working game. We are just a couple steps away from having a winning condition put in here and counting the number of steps and a few other little things, but we're, we basically have the hard work done. Congrats, everybody. Great work. All right, before we move on to other things here, I want to take care of that the button that lets me return to the main menu. So I want to be able to click that instead of hitting escape. Escape was just an easy way out for the, that time being. So I went into Game Maker, I pulled down Gameplay, Gameplay Button Sprite, and I did the same thing where I converted it to the strip image and export to PNG. So I'm using a completely different sprite than I am for the main menu button. And then I put it in, yeah, put it into my, you know, put it into my folder, put it into my resource files. You don't have to do this, but this just makes it so you can easily ac access it and just make sure it's in the right place. And then I, again, I have to make sure that texture is placed into the texture manager so that I can go ahead and use this thing. So then, okay, so then in my, uh, coming back to in my game here, my, uh, where is the room, the game, voxel game level room. You can see all this stuff here, and like coming back to this from a long time ago. We generate a box, generate a wall, generate a hero, generate a goal. And so on top of all of this, I can throw in, uh, I can throw in this button class and just set up an SFML button to do all the work because it's going to be the same for everything. We're just going to escape back to the main menu. So we don't have to do anything crazy with it. Dot H. Okay, so then... For, you know, so make sure the file open. I'll just do it last to make sure everything else worked out. And then I can just say, okay, SFML button pointer button equals new SFML button. And what do I need to do here? I need to figure out a lot of things, right? I need to figure out the X, Y position, the sprite, all this. And let's go to the game here and let me go into one of the gameplay rooms and see where this thing is in space. And say, okay, my button needs to go at 0, 0645 apparently. So 0, comma, 645, comma, callback function. Uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll call the function return to main menu, which I will define in a second. And I say, okay, text main menu. We've been doing that for others. I go, okay, that's, oops. Wait, what did I do wrong? Wait, hold on, let's see. Oh, wait. Sprite resource. Oh, the new sprite resource. I want to use, what did I call it here? Gameplay button. And then the callback is return to main menu. The string I want to actually put on there is main menu. Okay, so now the off color and the on color. I don't know that. Let's run, let me run the game real fast. I do not remember what that is. Let's run the game in Game Maker and see what we get. So I want it to be yellow or gray. The same as before. Okay, so I can, I can, I'm, I, I will redo it just because, just to kind of do this again, just to kind of reiterate this. I want color, I want yellow when it's in the off state, and I want, when it's in the on state, I want it to be that 128, 128, 128 gray. And so the only thing that's wrong here is this return to main menu function. And so coming back to this, it's a global function. Remember, it's a void on both ends of this thing. Return to main menu. And all it's going to do is call the game class, which I don't <laughs> I don't need I don't have that going for me, so I'll need to include that. 
get instance, change room, and I'm going to set up new main menu room. And I don't have that, so I'll have to include main menu room. I have main menu background, but I don't have main menu room. I'll have to clean up these includes if I ever come back to it. I'll have to set up a new main menu room and just say go there. So let's try it out. It compiles. That's a good step. Here we go. Oops, by button. Is the button there? Nope. And let's see, did I did I actually, after all that hard work, did I actually do the work of putting the button in the room? No, I set it all up. And then I and then I never I never put it into the room to manage. Put the button in. So let's try it now. Nope. Nope. It's there. It's a depth order issue. Because it is there, because I click, 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 but I get over there and it quits me out. So it really is just a matter of that, and I can just set that button, arrow, set depth, set depth, set depth to a four on top of everything else. And there, up, <laughs> that button is tiny. Okay, main menu and main menu and main menu. So okay, so this isn't the best, the best font for this. Oh shoot. Okay, so, and it's centered poorly and all sorts of other things because it's right now, I say I hard coded this. And again, let's just, let me just, let me just return this gameplay button back to uh, the regular button state since everything else has to be changed. Let me just report, uh, what did we call that other button? Uh, button, 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 gameplay button, main menu button. I'll just use that, even though it's a lot larger. Let's see what that does for us. There we go. Here we go. So just for the time being, then I can move this thing up. We're going to fix this thing up anyway, so I can move this up a little bit. How high is, how, how tall is this main menu? I'm just going to, yeah, why not just use the same sprite? But you can show you can do it at least, right? It's five, it's 150 high. So let's see, 720, 150, 570 is what I want for the height of this. It's huge. There it is. There's my main menu and mouse over, mouse over, because so we get all the benefits of everything before. I click, 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 but I click here and it takes me back. Level two, click and take me back. Level three, click and take me back. So I'm happy with this, right? This is pretty cool. And so now I have my button and I can go back in here, go back into my hero.cpp now and get rid of the escape key if you, if you want to. You don't have to if you don't want to, but you can if you want to. So now let's start counting the steps. So this can go into our hero class, hero.h, where's my hero.cpp? Okay, so I can set up some private data for this guy. I'm gonna need an int for the number of steps, and I'm also gonna need an SFML font pointer because we're gonna need that font and we're, we could, we're gonna make it smaller. The button is, is a little hard-coded. Again, there's tons of extra options we could add to this thing, but I'm not going to in the, for the time being. So I need to include SFML font dot H. And so then, and then so I'm just gonna create the font inside of here. And so I've got that going for me. So I cr call up to SFML object, and then I say, yep, of course, there's no steps when I start. And my font is new SFML font, and I just need, what do I need to pass in the resource? I don't even need, if it's nothing but the basic, I can leave it. That's cool. I like that, that it shows you the default behavior. And so I don't need to do anything more with it than that. And I just do over there. Okay. So then now what I need to do is take over the draw event so that I can draw the number of steps. But before that, at every chance I get, the only time that I ever have completed a step is here when I hit the alarm, because that means that I've completed one full push or one full walk to the next square. And so now when I take over the draw event, that's it's pretty easy to do here. Virtual void draw. And remember, I'm taking over for Game Maker, so I have to call my parent while I do this, and then I can call and draw my font. And so draw event, quick actions and refactoring. Call the draw event and say, okay, 
okay, what is my parent but SFML object? And I can say, hey, pretend like I didn't do anything and draw the hero. Because right now, if I forget to do this, if I call the draw event and I don't call the parent, my guy, he's there, right? He can, he's just invisible because he's not being drawn to the screen because there's no there's nothing in this draw function. So now put that draw back and everybody's happy. And there I am again, like nothing happened before. And so now I draw and then I can say for font, because it's a pointer, I can say, hey font, uh, print, print's my function, right? And so I can say, okay, what do I want to, at what position in space? I'll say five comma five. What is my string? My string is steps taken colon plus std two string. Do I have access to that? Yep. Steps. That's the that's the string I want to print. Uh, no, I don't care about the. Let's just look at the font. Let's look at the tint. Leave the tint alone and leave the scale alone. And let's see what. Oops. Okay, I got to get rid of the comma and add semicolon. But what does this look like for us now? And there we go. There's my steps taken. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Excellent work here. And it looks halfway decent in white the whole time. And it's maintaining every time I take a full step. So I'm not losing any steps by trying to walk into a wall or trying to push a box when I can't, that kind of thing. And so that looks pretty good. I don't need to scale this thing. This is what normal, normal size looks like. And it blows up on me. This is three times larger than this. And so let's see. And so one last thing here, because I newed up this this pointer, I do need the destructor for this thing, just so I can delete the font. So when this thing gets deleted, the font gets deleted accordingly too. And yeah, it, it's that's that was not an error. It was trying to tell me it was an error. Okay, so now the final thing left to do for this video before we move on then is to have the winning condition because when when I hit the alarm, I should check to see. And we did this in Game Maker. Does every goal hit, or does every goal touch a block? And if the answer is yes, then we have ourselves a winner. And if not, continue game on. So let's try that out right now. So ultimately, I'm going to be putting my win condition here in the heroes on alarm event, but we don't have the functionality yet to be able to get all the objects in the scene of a given type. You know, like, what did we do earlier? We actually said at a certain position, get me all the objects of a certain type. So we, we have the kind of that behavior, but we don't have the behavior we want. So we're going to have to go back into the room and then into the object and get and create that functionality. And so it's templated just as before, but this one is like get all game objects of type. And if you wanted to, you could change this to of type too, but I'm not going to do it for now if you wanted to keep consistent now that we've changed things. And again, changing things right now is, is the key. Changing things three years from now will break hundreds of games if you're the engine writer for a large company. So you gotta, you got to try to name these things as well as you can up front. So, okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to name this. I'm going to create it. I am going to hit escape there. And it's, but it's basically the same idea, but I'm not doing the extra check. I'm just not doing the is sprite within bounds check. I'm just getting rid of it. And so in this case, I'm saying for every object in my scene, try to cast it into the, take every object, cast it into T, and if you can, then put it into the vector. That's it. And so that's how you do things here on the, on the room side. Now that, that over here on the object side, it's the same. What did I, again, what, just, it's just a matter of what did I call this function? Get all objects of type. Get all objects of type. And I will implement this here down below. And then I will go ahead and steal this thing. So I can call this guy on that guy. Spread this out a little bit. And there you go. So I have my get all objects at position and I have all get all objects of type in the entire scene. And so now I believe I can use this. And again, I, I'll have to test it. I have to 
use it before I can actually see if it compiles correctly. And so now I can just check to see. I can take myself and I say, give me a vector of uh, goal pointers. I'll have to include goal. Yep, I'll have to include goal. Give me a vector of goal pointers. And that will equal this function that's going to get all game objects of type goal pointer. And then, oh, I don't need the x and the y. Sorry, I, all that work, I'm just flying through this. I do not need the x and the y because the position is irrelevant. So I can go back into both, both of these, just make sure I just do the right function, and get rid of all of the x, y components. Object is taken care of. Do the same here for room. So the only thing I'm passing in is the templated type that I'm trying to find all game objects for. And so now it's not giving me, oh. oops, no. Okay, what did I do wrong here? Let's see. Make sure I do the right stuff here. Get all objects of type. Get all objects of type. Did I do the right stuff? Okay, rebuild. So what, I, what I'm going to do here is, okay, I'm going to put a breakpoint here just to see what I get out of this thing. And I'm playing, okay, it, oh, I got to do an on alarm event, so I move. Okay, so there's my on alarm. I know you can't see anything, but it's irrelevant. So let's see what happens. Goal is this stuff. I'm not going to go into the function, but I, if I hit F10, goals is three-sized. And I have element zero is a, does it scream out goal anywhere? Nope. There it is, it's a goal. And if zero worked, all the others worked. There's one, that's a goal. And there's two, it's a goal. Cool, and it worked out. And so now I have to do for every goal, we have to do the same code here, bool. I say, if I won the game, and I say, yep, I've won, prove me wrong. And I can say for every goal pointer G that's part of goals, if, G, and now what's the question here? Is point within sprite bounds? Oh, okay. If if point is within sprite bounds, but we need to know if there's a box into it. So give me one second to, to think this out, and then I'll come back to you and show you the correct code. Okay, so here is my code for this. Got it working. So I'm saying, prove me wrong. I won the game. Prove me wrong. So I say, okay, get me every goal in here. Get all the goals. I don't believe you for a moment. So I get all the goal objects. And so there's three in this room, but there could be four, five, one, you know, it all matters. So I say, for every goal in my scene, try to figure out, get all objects that are touching that, that are touching the goal at the goal.x, goal.y position. And so if the game is, if I've won the game, then every goal is touching one box. And it's not the other way around because there's more, there could be more boxes than goals. And so, or, and if there's more goals than boxes, you can't win the game. So that's just bad design. So if the, if the size is not equal to one, I have lost the game. I've proven you wrong. I go, ah, I told you that one's not working for you. And so I can break out immediately out of this for loop. But if I go through the whole list, list and every goal is touching a box, then basically I haven't found a counterexample. And I can come down here and say, yep, you've got to be right. You won the game. And I can prove this to you. Oop, I'm running it over here somewhere. Where is it? Here we go. Whoops. It won't bring it up for me. There it is. So I can show you now, and there's my breakpoint. It's going to turn red as soon as I win the level, and not any moment before that, because that's my breakpoint to say, okay, what am I going to do in the winning condition state? All right, move around. I mean, I guess it doesn't much matter. You can see here I can be touching, 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 and when I finish the push, there it is. I've hit the winning condition because every one of the goals is touching a box. Wow, this is cool. The game's over, right? All we have to do left, all we have left now to do, now that we have this working, is to do something about the fact that you won the level. And so we're going to introduce the idea of the file system. Not a big deal. I mean, you can, all things considered, putting a little file in. Because inside of the room itself, we already know 
uh, we already know what uh, what room number, what level number we're in. So it should be pretty pretty relatively trivial to go ahead and, and go, hey, I won the game. Let's see if I have the best score. Put a little something up on the screen to tell me that. Great job. And then and then go back to main menu and show me all the buttons to show me the progress I made on all of the levels. And then the game is over. We've done it, right? This is everything else now is on the we're on the downhill slide. This is great. So I have no idea how long this video has gone. I know just know I have 11 or 12 parts of this. So I think this is as good of a time as any to quit this specific video because the gameplay is pretty much done and everything else now is a little bit of administrivia. We're going to be working between the button classes in the main menu and we're going to be working in here in this class making sure you know that the room knows how many steps you've taken and so forth and so on. So it's no longer pure gameplay, so I think it's a good place to stop. So as always, if I went a little too fast and you didn't can't see the video and you can't see what you're trying what I was trying to make you do in some of these situations, as always, sworn be at cod.edu is a great place to get a hold of me through email. Send a comment here in the comment section. And uh, I'm looking forward to the next video because the next video is pretty much the last couple steps here. We'll add a little polish on the end after that. And then we're going to call it, ship it, call it a day, and have some fun with our, our beautiful creation. Thanks, everybody. See you next time.